What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Tar Heel Illustrated.com, or if you're watching on our YouTube channel, Tar Heel Illustrated. I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner, and joining me, as he always does, our very own publisher, Andrew Jones. And Andrew, before we dive into today's video, going to go ahead and blast the promo we've got going on at Tar Heel Illustrated.com. Sign up before April 25th. Don't pay until August 1st. Get access to all of our premium boards. Get access to all of our premium content. AJ, I'm going to kick it to you real quick because, you know, you've, you've been running this site a lot longer than I've been around. So just kind of go through the perks of, of what signing up for our premium message boards, and what it is and kind of what goes along with that. Yeah, don't base what we're reporting on what you see in these videos if you just happen to come to our channel all the time or if you follow us on Twitter. Mm-hmm. That's not the extent of it at all. It's not even close. There's so of much of what that, yeah. we report, mm -hmm. especially during the last few weeks when there's been all this coaching stuff at Carolina with basketball, player movement, transfer portal, everything else. We don't go tweet that stuff out. We have people who pay hard-earned money, good money to be a part of our community. We give it to them on the board. So a lot of our updates, Dean is Danny's if you're a football recruiting guy. And David Sis stuff if you're a basketball recruiting guy. There's so many of the updates that we've had, you know, we were following the Walker Kessler situation, Justin McCoy, mm -hmm. the assistant coaches, all that kind of stuff. That stuff's on the board. Every once in a while, we may post a board thread on the front and tweet it out. But for the most part, so much of what we have going on, the outside world doesn't see. It, and that's what makes premium access so special. Plus, yeah. some of our articles, David, David Sisk is crushing it in basketball recruiting, talking to kids after Roy retired and Hubert was hired to get in their take and their family's take and their high school coaches take on on what the communication is now. There were some cases where it was starting all over again. Yeah. There were some cases where it was just sort of a continuation. You're only going to get that information if you have premium access. It's fascinating stuff. So just $8.33 a month without the promo. Yeah. But now yeah. you just sign up. You don't have to worry about paying until till, uh, August. I, I kind of made a joke the other day when we were doing a Zoom, just talking about stuff as a staff. It's, it's like buying a couch. Yeah. You go buy a couch, they say, Buy the couch now. Don't pay until after July. Exactly. Or we need a little like ad like that. <laughs> no, no pay until 2022. So, you know, you, it, we're a lot less expensive than a couch. And yeah, we give uh, off a lot more information. So. Exactly. 833 <clears throat> a month. Definitely worth it. But yeah, like I said, go take advantage of that promo before it runs out. Um, AJ, let's dive into this topic of the video. And now that the plug is over, going to be talking about the linebackers, middle linebackers, if you will. Um, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and we'll, it, talented group. And we're going to go ahead and dive into that right here. I think the starters are Jeremiah Gimmel and Eugene Asante. Now that Chaz Surratt's gone to the NFL, I mean, Jeremiah Gimmel, a guy that's played a ton since he's been here at Carolina, kind of the – I don't know if I'm making this up or if Jay Bateman called him this, but I think Jay Bateman called him this, kind of the quarterback of that defense in terms of what he does out yeah. there. Yeah. Calling the plays, getting that in, communication. I mean, I've been on the field a lot over the past couple of seasons doing video and photos, and he's a guy that is very vocal out there and is super important to what this – you know, how this defense work it, it works, if you will. So – you kind of know what you're getting with him and his talent and what he brings. Eugene Asante, a guy that's been talked about a lot because Chaz Surratt was there, had didn't really get a lot of opportunities over the past couple of years, but got an opportunity to start in that Orange Bowl, Orange Bowl excuse me, with Chaz Surratt opting out and thought he was really good in that game, and especially when you consider he just hadn't got a ton of reps at that position last year. For him to come into that game and play like he did, I think really bodes well. So those are the guys you're kind of expecting – to start uh, and be really, really good, solid middle linebackers for this team. So before we dive into the other guys, some of the younger guys in the group, what are your thoughts on, on how that position is, is looking right now? Well, I'm a big Jeremiah Gimmel fan for a couple of reasons. Number one, as a guy who interviews these athletes and wants the quotable stuff, Jeremiah is a great quote. You know, when he starts talking about their defense and other guys, he sounds like a future defensive coordinator. He does, yeah. I think he's got that he, for sure. <laughs> he, he, the thing I like about him is he's the quintessential quarterback. What does a quarterback do on offense? What does he know? He knows what every the other yep. 10 guys are supposed to do at all times. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah knows what the other 10 guys are supposed to do at all times. And he barks the cadences. He's always communicating out there. He's a, he's a good player who at times is very good. Yeah. For him as a player in a field, you want him to be very good on a consistent basis. If he does that, then he's going to get an opportunity to get into a camp next year and, 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 and get looked at by an NFL team. But as a collegiate, he's a very good college player, in my opinion, much of the time. Mm -hmm. But then the physical stuff, but then you throw in the mental stuff. How, how he prepares for an opponent, how he learns the film book, the standard he sets in that room about you got to know the book. 
You've got to know what you're supposed to do. You must be accountable for, for always understanding in pre-snap what you can do in every kind of situation. He sets that standard. I mean, the does. bar is very, very high because he's a very smart guy. Uh, he obviously has a passion for this sport. You wouldn't know it as well as he does it, but <clears throat> 21, almost 22 years old, without having an amazing passion for it. And I think as the leader in that room, and he's definitely the leader in that room, that's going to make the rest of the room good. It's going to make them better. And it's going to teach those kids, okay, if I want to be Gemmel, I've got to be like him. I've got to raise my game from every conceivable way and how you carry yourself, how you eat when you're not around the coaches, how you prepare when you're at home by yourself, all those kinds of things. So, I, I you know, if you're a coach, Jeremiah Gemmel is a dream to have on your team because he's that guy. Asante, very gifted, really good athlete. And the thing that people kind of forget about him He's played about, what, 320 snaps on special teams or something like yeah, that. Yeah, big special teams guy. Mm-hmm. He's been uh, – yeah, I mean, uh, I think uh, Jeremiah uh, called him a war daddy. Mm-hmm. And he said that well, he didn't have to gain the respect of his teammates because of his play in the Orange Bowl when he had exactly. 10 tackles and played 63 snaps. He already had it before then because special teams will do that. He's a – the beast on special teams. He's the first guy downfield. He's a guy that will, you know, blow up some of the, um, the some of the blocking calls that you have on on the returns and special mm-hmm. teams and and do all that stuff. So he already had the respect of his teammates. But what he gained in the Orange Bowl was confidence that he could do it. Not just sixty three snaps in a game, but against the number five team in the country that was very physical and a team that protected the passer well. A team that was very physical with the run blocking. So. You know, he got a, got a heck of an opportunity to see himself up against one of the better clubs to, to, to go up against in the country. So he learned a lot. Now for him, as he said, I mean, these are his words, he's just got to learn the playbook better. He's got to learn to prepare better, have the mindset that he's going to be out there for 60 snaps every game. He's not Chaz Surratt, but he has a role that Chaz had, and he used to be Eugene Asante in that role. And if he trusts his talent, he'll be fine in that role. And I think that that's what we'll, we're seeing him learn to do this offseason. We saw it based on what he said, his teammates said, how he handled the few months after the Orange Bowl, mm-hmm. and then, of course, how he's handling spring practice. I think the I think that that group's going to be fine. The two starters yeah. there, Carolina's in really good shape. Some people are concerned about linebacker. I'm actually not one of them. I think Carolina's in really good shape at linebacker. Chaz was fantastic, Jacob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chaz was a playmaker. No doubt about Chaz it. Chaz is just not a typical athlete you see at linebacker. But an improved Gemmel and Asante, you know, inching toward his potential, they're going to be really good in that room too. Very, Bateman says, I'm, I know I'm long on this answer, but Bateman says that Asante can tackle, he can cover, he can run sideline to sideline, mm-hmm. he could go backwards, he can burst forward, he could plug a gap with a, or the tackle, he can take on blockers, he could do all those things. Now he's going to get a chance to do it for 12 weeks. Yeah, agreed. I, I'm, I'm feeling – I agree with you in terms – I'm feeling pretty good about that position in terms – I know some people are kind of worried about it, but I think with Asante and Gimmel there and something I'm going to get a hit on in a second with some of the younger guys, I, I think this group's in good shape. Now, let's talk about the other guys, you know, Cedric Gray, Kadri Jackson, Ra Ra Dilworth, Power Eccles. Obviously, Ra Ra and Power Eccles, you know, those two true freshmen coming in. I think with those two guys – based on what we've seen in the scrimmages, Ra Ra is a guy that just needs to get bigger to play the linebacker position. Incredibly fast, incredibly gifted, incredibly quick. When you look at him out there, he, he, I think you said it, but he kind of looks like a defensive back playing at linebacker right now. So he's going to need a couple years in the weight room, maybe a year or so to develop. But I think his upside is great, and I would expect him to have a, a big role on the special teams especially. Power Eccles a guy that looks big in high school, but now that you see him kind of out there, definitely a little bit bigger than Ra Ra, looks a little bit more ready to play that position physically, but still a guy that needs to develop and get a little bit bigger and get in the weight room for a little bit longer. I think Kaji Jackson and Cedric Gray are the guys that you'll see kind of playing those backup roles. Now, what I'm really most interested about with this position is we saw Eugene Asante, for instance, last year as a guy that was talked up a ton. But Jay Bateman in the de- defense – Chad Surratt and Jeremiah Gimmel just didn't come out of the games. So to me, when I'm looking at Asante and Gimmel now, I'm saying, okay, is it going to be a similar situation to what we've seen since Bateman's come in where he's sticking with those two guys and those two guys are going to play 99% of the reps during, during the games? 
Or is he maybe going to dip in, give maybe Kaji Jackson an opportunity, Cedric Gray an opportunity? I know Cedric Gray's name has been, been touted around a little bit during spring practice as a guy that's impressed is, is kind of that backup linebacker. But that's kind of what I'm looking at because you look at these four guys, I'm not sure Ra Ra and Power are ready to play besides on special teams. I'm not sure if they're ready to come in and make an instant impact just basically physically. Cedric Gray and Kaji Jackson, we haven't really seen a lot of them play at the linebacker position. They played a ton on special teams, but – Overall, when you look at the depth this side, this linebacker has, I mean, we just we don't really know how good the, the depth can be because we just haven't seen them play a lot when it matters at the linebacker position. But I think overall, when you look at it, there is talent there. It's just how are they going to be utilized and whatnot going into the season? Because like I said, with Bateman, not a guy that really likes to rotate his his linebackers, at least based on what we've seen over the past couple of seasons. Well, he said last August he was going to. We were going to yeah. see Asante, and we were going to see Jackson more so Asante, but we really didn't. But he That's also funny. explained away, said, look, if you have Chester and Jeremiah Gimble on the field, you know, it really who, 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 <laughs> doesn't matter who's behind him, who, who wants to go to the bench and take them off the field? Yeah. It's so that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So I suspect that we're not going to see the reserves play a ton unless there's an injury, but you have to get them prepared in case there is an injury because injuries do happen. So – I think if, if Gemmel and Asante remain healthy and aren't and they're going to get dinged up, but if they don't miss any reps because of an injury, they're going to be fine. So what happens if one of them does get injured or both of them get injured? I think Kadri Jackson is going to be fine. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing I thought was really interesting about Kadri Jackson was uh, two years ago when we were at one of the – it was that night open practice we were at. Mm -hmm. he, the whole practice, he took all, did all those drills with the defensive backs because mm -hmm. he needed to learn how to cover. A lot of linebackers in high school don't properly learn how to cover. Yeah, and I yeah, thought that yeah. that was really neat because, you know, you see in August of 2019, a guy preparing in a manner that will pay off in 20, fall of 2021, let's yeah. say. You get to the game and all that yeah. work he was doing then has made him the player that he might be today. I would be very interested in watching Jackson and Gray in an actual game, especially Gray because we've seen very little of them except on special teams. The thing I do like about them both is they're both extremely athletic. Second, great. I mean, sideline, sideline guy for sure. Uh, and Jackson does have some experience. He's lined up on the field. Yeah, he has played. He's yeah. played. He's got some stuff on film. He, he's an experienced film room guy now. He's an experienced go to practice guy. Just hadn't got a lot of game reps. I think they'll be okay if he has to come into the game. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they'll be okay if Cedric Drake has to come in if they if they go that far uh, into the depth. Because we just haven't seen him do it. Yeah, we haven't. He's seen a him. good athlete, good football player. Man, we played. He was a lot of people recruited as a wide receiver, mm -hmm. so he's a guy that can just move. Yeah, and linebackers that can move are linebackers that are hard to block. Mm -hmm. And if you're hard to block, then you the field's kind of open in front of you. You can make straighter. You can make beelines to backs. You get there a little bit quicker. You can make plays. I think that's what we're seeing them recruit to at linebackers: dudes that can make plays. They can make a beeline to the ball carrier. They can cover. Uh, if they blitz, they can get through a gap quickly and get to the quarterback. The, the, the athlete, the athlete component linebacker has been elevated significantly in the last oh, few yeah, years. Yeah, for sure. And you really see that with Ra Ra and power to a degree, but Ra Ra is just a freak athlete. Mm -hmm. uh, young kid, got to get stronger. We saw him get popped in the scrimmage. Yeah, he did a little bit. Little just as hell. I can't remember if it was Carr or Cop Company. I can't remember. It was one, one of the of tight, tight ends, ends kind of. But that was great, though. I love seeing stuff like that because you got to get your, you got to get popped, you got to get your bell run, you got to get up off the ground and say, you know what? Okay, I got a taste of it. Yeah, this is what's going to be like all the time. I can college, handle this. Yeah. <laughs> Every football player, when you get the, when you first do that in varsity football in high school, you got to go through it. Mm -hmm. When you get to college, you got to go through it. So they're going through that stuff. I don't. I have a hard time imagining that Ra Ra, especially. And power will be able to help them a lot at linebacker this year. Yeah, me too. But if they have some big wins, I wouldn't be surprised to see them get some reps out there. And certainly wouldn't be surprised to see them both on special teams. Especially yeah, I think they'll play a lot on special I was going to run down the field. Mm -hmm. Like his hair is on fire and fine. The kid ran a 4-4. Four, four. I think four, long four, term, they're in really good shape. Fast guy. Mm -hmm. I long agree. term, they're in really good shape there with the depth. Mm -hmm. I just don't know outside. Of, I think Jackson's fine. I just don't know outside of that really what they have. And we won't know until we see him play. Exactly. And like I said, with Bateman's rotation, I mean, it wouldn't really be a surprise if we don't see a lot of those guys getting even an opportunity anyway if Asante and Gim will play like, you know, we expect them to going into the season. But yeah, I expect all four of those guys at least to 
to probably be big special teams players, especially the, the, you know, the older guys in that room. So we'll see how that goes, but yeah, starting linebacker Asante Gimmel, I think you're feeling pretty confident about that going in. And I think the reps that Asante got in the orange bowl, especially were, like you mentioned, a big confidence booster for him heading in, into this season. It just shows how valuable, you know, sometimes, you know, you, you, I know Carolina fans would have loved for Carolina to win that game with the full strength squad, but we've talked about it a lot. The value that they got out of playing a lot of young guys all across the field, not just Eugene Asante, you get throw Josh Downs in there as well. I think he's going to really bode well for, for this team this season. So yeah, we'll see how it goes, man. But I think linebacker is looking good going into the 2021 season. Good. The 2021 Tar Heels will be better. Yeah, I'm just going to throw this in here. So, you know, what the heck. I have license to interrupt you at least once a video. Yeah, yeah, you're good. I, I'll let it happen. Because I'm yeah. uh, the The value of the 20, the 21, 20, 2021 team is going to be better because those guys opted out of the ball game. They will. Mm -hmm. Ty Chandler is here because of it. Gina Sante is a dude now. Mm -hmm. He knows what it's all about. He's, we're not wondering. He's not wondering. His teammates aren't wondering. The staff's oh, not wondering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They know. Yeah, so that's why I don't have a giant question mark over this group as a whole. I do over the depth, but not as the starters. So yeah. 2020, the bowl game, the Orange Bowl is going to make this team a lot better. Definitely. I completely agree, AJ. I think it's a good place to wrap this one up. I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones. Like we blasted in the beginning, make sure you go out to our website. Just click the link in the description below. We'll have a link down there. Sign up before April 25th. Don't pay until August 1st. Get access to all of our premium boards and premium content. Definitely well worth it. As always, guys, if you've enjoyed the video, like, share, subscribe, and also go watch some of our previous Tape Talk videos as we've been putting a ton out on the offense and the defense as well. So definitely go check those out. As always, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.